What's up, guys? This is Keith Kelfis, and I have an awesome guest. Tune in. Say what's up, Sid. How's it going, guys? So we have Sid Graff from Squeegeeology, and he's a guy who's automated his window cleaning business to the point where he can actually take an entire week off every single month and invest his time into, into whatever he wants to do because his business is automated. He's been a speaker at the huge convention at ICE, and tons of people know who he is. He's, he's an influencer in our industry because he's so great at teaching the lessons of how to take your business and make it serve you instead of you, you know, working like a slave in your business. So Sid Graff from Squeegeology, what's going on, man? Thank you very much, Keith. Thanks for having me on. And good, you, you said something. <clears throat> It's that like you you actually just said the thing that cuts the heart of the issue and that is how to make your business work for you so it supports you and your lifestyle not the other way around because i think probably if we were if everybody that's watching or listening to this could you know was in a room full of people and i said raise your hand if you've worked more than 60 hours in a week raise your hand if you're like you're doing everything every hand would go up because everybody's been there you're like you're like grind and grind and grind and grind to try to get the wheels turning fast enough to get the momentum so that you can put more people on your train so that you can get off the train and let it go on its own, right? Yeah, but don't, don't you have to like, while the train's like already moving, you have to like get off the train and run out in front and like build the tracks and make sure they're set up to take turns at high speeds while you you're You do, and here's here's a great point. Because most people start their business, you know, you've, I'm sure you've read the E-Myth, or oh, yeah. you're familiar with E-Myth. I mean, it's like the Bible for small business guys because most people are a good technician and they go, I'm going to start my own business and they get it going. But then they don't really know how to We're not a business. So they go, oh crap, I need an accountant. So you got to, I can't afford one. So I'm going to have to learn how to do accounting and then I'm going to have to do my own taxes. Then I have to do, you know, every single, I've got to sell, I've got to market, I've got to close, I've got to bid, I've got to do the work, I've got to follow up. And you know, there are 50 things that have to be done for every client. But in the beginning, you're doing all of those 50 things and you're probably doing two of them well and everything else you kind of suck at. But who else is going to do it? I mean, that's the big thing. Because, you know, and you read these books like The E-Myth or you read, you know, some business book and you're like, well, delegate to your team. You're like, what if my team is me? What if there's nobody else to delegate to? Then what do you do? And so it's true. Then you are, you're kind of out in front of the train building the track as you go. Because most of us, when we start a business, it, we, we start at it, just some point in time and then it evolves around us. We're very few people actually start a business by design, like actually have a business plan, actually plan out, you know, these are all the pieces of the puzzle and these are the people I need to hire and this is what needs to happen. We, we just don't do that. We just grow into it over time. People that, um, when somebody buys a franchise, a lot of that stuff is done for you. I mean, the, the track's already built. You just have to start, you know, putting coal in the train to make it go. And I, I was adamantly against um, against any type of franchise. But you're like, oh my God, $50,000 for a window cleaning franchise? That's robbery. How can they do that? And I thought, well, that's really silly. But then I realized that I spent, the, our, our current business, this is our 15th year, I spent 15 years developing the system to make our business run. How much is 15 years of your time worth? I mean, I didn't have 50 grand at the time. If I had, I might have just bought a franchise and skipped all that learning, developing part. Just like somebody said, here's the system, go do it. But here's here's what I want to tell you. Um, you know, 15 years ago, I couldn't imagine taking off a weekend, let alone a week. And this year, this summer, was my wife and I's our 25th anniversary. So we actually took two entire weeks off and went to Europe. We spent time in Paris, in Vienna, in Prague. Wait a second. I saw you on Facebook. You were posting pictures smiling. It was like green, but it looked like cliffs or something. I don't know. It didn't look like the United States, bro. Yeah, no, not United States. And it was, we had we had two weeks off. And Keith, um, this, to me, it was like a miracle, like walking on water. We were gone for two weeks and didn't receive a single phone call, a text, a Vox, nothing. My team ran everything is better than I could have. Well, I was gone. And when I got back, I honestly expected oh, there were probably three or four fires need put out. I'm gonna have a stack of, you know, mail and bills this deep that needs to be handled. And I'm I'm not joking, I was actually surprised. But I got back and there were eight bills that needed to be paid that were not on automatic payment. Everything else was done. And my team, you know, my my production manager said, uh, you know, like, give me the, uh, you know, give me all the shit. Tell me what happened. What, you know, what do I have to jump in and fix? He's like, we broke two windows. 
one of them's already been replaced. The other one is, you know, is in the shop and everybody's happy. And they even posted a review for us. I'm like, you guys don't even need me. Why well, that, you know, it was like that mixed blessing of like, hallelujah, you don't need me. And oh my God, what am I going to do? Nobody needs me. Um, but it's a great place to be when you can get the wheels spinning to the point where you're actually not needed. So here, here's what I want to suggest. You can, you can, you, you pretend, I'm going to pretend that you're the audience. And there's, yeah. there's a thousand, you know, window cleaners, landscapers, carpet cleaners, whoever's watching. And when I ask the question, you got to fill in the blank. And everybody does this. You know, all us small business owners, starters, go getters, you know, if good help is what? Good help is hard to, I jumped in a little, a little early. Everybody, gets, everybody talks about, you know, you're worried about employees. Like, if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. You ever hear yourself saying that? Um, oh, did we glitch out? No, no, no. I'm, I'm listening to everything. Okay, you can, okay good. So I, these, are, these are like stories that we tell ourselves. Like, good help is hard to find. Like, you can't get good employees these days. Or, you know, like every older generation says, ever, since Plato every older generation has said kids these days suck they you know they don't know how to work they don't know how to think they don't they, they don't know how to get anything done but whenever we tell ourselves those stories or we buy into you know good help is hard to find or if you want something done correctly you have to do it yourself you're just limiting yourself like because if you say if you want it done right you have to do it yourself then then by definition you have to do everything yourself which means you will never grow. You will just grow to the point of how many hours in a day can you physically work, and then that's your ceiling, and that's the limit, and then you work until you die. And I don't think that you're the, the people watching or listening or small business owners, I don't think that you probably started your business so that you could become a slave to yourself and work your ass into a grave. You probably started your own business so that you wouldn't be beholden to the man or an employer or so you could call your own shots you could build your own schedule you could have some freedom in your life now that's that's what most people get into business for and earlier tonight keith um just kind of bring that home you you messaged me um and said hey i'm gonna be a few minutes late i ran into my dad at the mall and we had dinner and i'm yeah. like and at the very moment you see the picture right behind me um it's it's back it's small it's not yeah. even, it's a nondescript picture. That picture was uh, belonged to my dad, and I lost my dad when I was 19. And when you said that, I was actually just before I got that message, I was looking at that and thinking about my dad. And it's been 30 years ago when he passed away, and and I was like, damn, right. I, w I wasn't the least bit offended that we were gonna like scoot the schedule back because you got to spend time with your dad. And, like to be able to take your time and do what you want with it. That's more important than how much money you make. This is my opinion, but to be able to control your time and do things that matter and make memories is a lot more valuable than money in the bank, okay? And that's not to say I don't want money in the bank, but like I got into business so I could be at all the Little League games for my kids. So I could, you know, so I could go on date nights with my wife like you do with your wife on Tuesday nights. Those things, that's where, that's great. I. I I'll start telling stories if you just let me go. So I'm gonna pause right there. No, I like the stories. You know why? Because what you're doing even for me right now is you're actually tying in a benefit, a reason why. You're tying in like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the reason, the driving force to get certain things done. Yeah. It's good stuff. So sometimes you do have to do all the work yourself. I mean, if you're a one-man show, you gotta work 80 hours, you gotta work 100 hours, you gotta work on Sunday, you do whatever it is. Um, Hey Keith, we just popped. We've got ten minutes left, so I'm going to shift gears, and I want to. I want to. I don't know if I can show you my screen. I'm going to try. I, I tried it earlier tonight. Share screen. I'm going to put up the whiteboard, and I'm really sloppy at this, so bear with me. I'm going to type in one thing on here on the whiteboard so everybody can see it. And this is what I want. It's a gift. Eighty twenty service business. dot com 80 20 service business you go there you can hit the link and i'm going to give you a uh, a grid or a roadmap on how to 
I, I call it ten dollars an hour versus a thousand dollars an hour. And I'm and I apologize, I'm not able to share that part of the screen with you so you can actually see it right now. But um, if you go to 8020servicebusiness.com, you can download and get a copy. And here's what it is. I'm going to shift over. I'm going to come back to real life. Sorry. Man, I am clunky with this kind of technology. Did you know that? Yeah, but you're good at making money. <laughs> Stop sharing. Um, okay. So when I when I spoke at the huge convention, my topic of teaching was was 80-20 for service business, how to make more money in less time with less effort. And that's what I'm, I've been able to do in the last five years. I made a real concerted uh, focus on turning my, I always called it a business, but I really, I just owned a job. Like I did everything, right? And I had a couple of helpers and I'd fill the tanks with gas. I would refill the wood, fix the stuff that broke, I'd schedule, I'd do blah, blah, blah. But five years ago, I said, this is not cool. I'm gonna build a business that can run without me that becomes an asset that when I reach a certain point, then if I want to sell it, it's valuable. It runs on its own. Somebody's going to say, here, here's a big bucket of money. Take it because I want what you've built. I'm like, so I'm building that, you know, for an exit. Um, but in teaching the 80-20 for business, I, I set up this uh, spreadsheet. It's a grid and, and it just breaks down. All of us have different level of tasks that we do. We got $10 an hour tasks. We've got $100 an hour tasks. We've got $1,000 an hour work that we do, even $10,000 an hour work that we do. An example of $10 an hour task is like, if you're the sole proprietor, or you're the small business owner, it's like sweeping your garage after cleaning your van, mowing your own lawn, um, checking the oil, cleaning the bathroom, cleaning the equipment, doing data entry at the end of the day, doing your invoices, going to the bank, making a deposit. Now, don't get me wrong, I love making deposits, but somebody else can do that for 10 bucks an hour. Actually, I have an assistant that I pay $11 an hour and he does every random thing that I don't wanna do. Um, I've got a package that needs to, I need to drop in the mail. I just leave it on a desk for him. He doesn't work in our office. He stops by twice a week, picks up the mail, makes a deposit, records all this stuff, any random thing that I need done. He just takes it and does it. And for me, it's like, it magically happens without me. But those are $10 an hour tasks. $100 an hour tasks is things like if you're a window cleaner, you're cleaning glass. That that gets you $100 an hour in your pocket. Giving estimates to new clients, solving a problem for a client, closing a sale, talking to a qualified prospect. Here's the thing, uh, Keith, is you can quickly and easily hire somebody to run your errands, mow your grass, and do stuff like that. Do data entry, return phone calls, like just you know, hire a girl to come in one for an hour a day and she just picks up the phone and, and calls everybody that was serviced that day and says, hey, this is Jim with Spectrum Window Cleaning. And there's probably if it's a girl, she wouldn't say Jim. This is <laughs> Spectrum Window Cleaning. And I just want to make sure that, you know, the guys did a good job and everything was okay. Are you happy? And then you go, will you post a review for us? Will you give us a reference or, you know, give us a referral? But I would argue strongly that if you can make $100 an hour cleaning windows, Go clean the windows and pay an office person to answer the phone. Pay somebody to do all the other shit, to hand uh, out the flyers. I do want to add to that real quick. I'm not at the level that you're at, but um, am, am I too close to this microphone? No, it sounds clear. Okay, so uh, a few months back, I just snapped and I went out. I said, I don't care how much it costs. I'm hiring a secretary, right? Yeah. Dude, with the Voxer app, I would do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Like I sent her quotes and videos and every single thing and she just does it all she manages the quickbooks service monster now we're on response a bit and sells and closes jobs over the phone it books it on the calendar and we just show up to do the work and yeah. she's doing everything including uh uh curating the five-star reviews now follow like i'm like why didn't i do this years ago <laughs> that's bravo that is so good you, you didn't do it years ago because there's a in your head you're thinking you know, well, I can't afford it. I can't afford to pay somebody, you know, whatever it comes out to 500 bucks a week, 600 bucks a week. But once you do it, you realize, holy crap, I can't afford not to do that. Somebody else, in my case, like the two things I'm really good at in my business is cleaning a window and marketing and PR. So I can like, I can schmooze with the people, I build the relationships, but I hate answering the phone. I hate returning a phone call. I hate data entry with a passion. Anything that's paperwork makes my eyes bleed. I just, in the day I realized that somebody else loves all that shit that I hate, 
was the day that I was like, this, this is going to change, that my life just changed. And that's when it actually changed, ironically. So, <laughs> so here's the cool thing. You can take this, you're always, so the spreadsheet, I hope everybody gets it. You move from the left to the right. You, you're at $10 an hour doing your task. Skip all that shit, give it to somebody else, do a hundred dollar an hour task, but then get to a point where you're like, the, what's a thousand dollar an hour task for, for people like us? Here's something, creating your ads and your marketing, like creating the door hangers, not putting them out, but building them, designing them, getting you know your idea across to a designer who's gonna do it building out your sales funnel or your customer journey or writing a sales letter or a sales page or even planning and prioritizing your day or your week can be $1,000 an hour work because it cuts out all the wasted time. And then you, when you as much as possible move into that $1,000 an hour zone where you're the one building the sales journey, the, the, the ads, the marketing, saying no to people that want you to do everything in the world, hire somebody else to clean the glass. You can train somebody else to give estimates. You can train somebody else to close the cell, to talk to qualified you know, prospects. And then every time you shift into that $1,000 an hour sweet time, here's the, the cool thing, is that it, it's worth 10 times as much, but it doesn't pay you instantly. It's like when you finish cleaning the last window and you go, Mrs. Johnson, that'll be $400. She gives you a check. You're like, bing, I've got it in my hand. When you create a good ad that you can run on Facebook, that is evergreen enough to run for three years, that one ad may make you $40,000, but it took you an hour to put together. Oh, so if you take the time crafting really, really, really good, good direct response marketing campaigns, then you can you can tweak the system until you get a lead generation system that flows more and more and more leads because yeah. now you have the time to focus on that, to curate that, to support a team. Yes, yes, so sometimes you have to do both. But as much as you can, like keep pushing into the upper echelon, go to the 10, you know, the thousand, the 10,000. And even some guys like Brian Haggerty ran a, uh, what do they call it? Voicemail bomb with Sin Jim this summer. And he said he spent about 15 minutes putting together. He just emailed all the stuff over to Sin Jim's like, here's my list. Here's my recording, send it out. And they did it. It took him 15 minutes. And that booked $34,000 worth of work in the next two weeks. Now, wow. He's built a business where he had 1,200 former clients that he could send that to, but still, that's like, time's gonna pass anyway, so if it takes you 12 years to build up where you can send a voicemail and make 30 grand, put in the time, it's worth it. It's Leverage, so you might have to climb to the top of the mountain to get the view, which would take yeah. you know an hour or whatever, but okay, so if you, wow, it's a totally different state of consciousness to access, we got about one minute here. What's the name of your website again, dude? I wanna go to this too. 8020, so it's the numbers 8020servicebusiness.com. 8020servicebusiness.com. Go there, you can download it. And there's also a link there if you want, you can get a copy of Perry Marshall's book, 8020 Sales and Marketing. Now, Perry's a personal friend of mine and, and my, a mentor. And so, just in the past two years that I've been spending time with him, my business has gone from right about 300,000 to 500,000, but my profit margin has more than doubled which is a miracle to me it's when you have enough cash in the bank to actually implement all the shit that you want to that makes a big difference so that's uh, a that's another hour we could spend the Pareto um, principle okay what is it 8020 servicebusiness.com yes 8020 servicebusiness.8020 service. okay 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 guys screw all these guys watching i'm going i'm going to go <laughs> I'll just play dude hey we're almost out of time keith thank you for having me on i i would love to keep going we could do it again absolutely Thanks, Sid. I'll see you soon, man. All right. Take care. Yeah.